What is up guys, Bob Gar here and it's closing thoughts time for 10 ticket modern mono green stompy for $10 deck. We went 2-3 in the friendly modern league. Played against pretty much all top tier decks, so it's not too surprising that we had a slightly losing record. We we're almost dead even on games. We lost one more game than we won. Um, so very close. It was a very it felt very evenly matched throughout the uh, league that we did. And let's talk about the cards that did well and the cards that didn't do well. So first off, the ones that didn't do so well, Prey Upon. There's just there's better options than Prey Upon. Uh, it's not that Prey Upon is bad. It's just the fact that its sorcery speed is a big drawback, and it's not usually a big deal. But against super removal heavy decks, it's just hard to stick a creature to actually use Prey Upon with. Uh, so for that reason, it gets an X here. We would rather use something like Dismember. It just wasn't in the budget of this deck. Colonian Tusker, you probably noticed, was like the first card I cited out when we needed to put things in a lot of times. Other than Aspect occasionally, but Aspect is actually pretty important to the deck. It just uh, is bad in certain matchups. But Tusker is just one of our worst threats. It's just a 3-3 for 2 is nice, but it's not powerful. You know, at the level that Modern is powerful. And Dying to Lightning Bolt is a big drawback. So that's why that one gets an X. Uh, and then... Kessig Prowler, I, I still think it could be good. I still think it's worth it as a 2 of, but it never ended up being useful. I feel like Dryad Militant was better for us just because in a few matchups, exiling things from people's graveyard was relevant. And Kessig Prowler's ability just never ended up coming into play for us in, in the games that we played. So those are the X's. And then the checks. Uh, String Root Geist, the fact that it survives sweepers is just super good. Keeps us in a lot of games. Uh, it kind of shores up our weakness against kind of control decks because we're a turn slower than most aggro decks and so it's a little harder for us to get under control decks and Stranger Root Geist means if they spend turn 4 tapping out for a sweeper, a lot of times we'll still have a 3-2 on the board to finish things off and that's a big help. And I just generally think it was one of the most effective cards in our deck. Weatherback Bailoff, just the biggest threat that we have and he came through a lot of times in the clutch and helped us pull out games. Provides the most devotion, has the biggest body. A 4-5 for 3 is a pretty good rate, and it's a pretty simple card, but it's very powerful. And then finally, check mark on Raincore. This was kind of the last one I decided on. I just I feel like Trample is just so important for the deck, and being able to use it on anybody is super important. I I, I had trouble deciding between this, Vines of the Vastwood, just because of its flexibility, is a really, really powerful card in the deck. Avatar of the Resolute, I think, is the probably uh, it's hard to say whether it's the best i think string roots uh, guys is probably a more important two drop but avatar the resolute is our highest value two drop in a lot of ways a lot of times you can get it out at least as a four three for two uh and sometimes even a five four which is crazy and experiment one is the other one where it's just like it's so good in the deck and it's so good in so many ways that people don't think about like nobody thinks about the regenerate but the re regenerate makes the card so much better so yeah all those cards are very Powerful, but I had to pick one, uh, and I happened to pick happened to pick Rancor. Uh, so that's that's that. I really enjoy playing this deck. I like it a lot. Let's talk a little bit about how to upgrade it. Some of these I have in my version, and some of them I don't. But this is this is the general upgrade path that I think I would recommend. I think Scavenging Ooze is good in enough matchups that it actually warrants mainboard inclusion. It combos nicely with Avatar the Resolute, uh, so I think it's worth going down a couple tuskers and, and up a couple scavenging oozes it was priced out of this build but i think it's it's worth it overall it's a 2-2 that can eat cards out of the graveyard and if it eats a creature it gets a plus one plus one counter it can eat other things but it's just a really nice card to have on the board uh it hoses graveyard strategies like dredge a lot of times it can hose snap casting mages just by eating the spell before it can get snapped back you can eat things that have like flashback and things like that it's just, it's, a, it's not quite as good a graveyard hoser as like, you know, exile all cards from all graveyards or whatever, but it's still very strong. Like when I play against, I play this, I, I own this deck and Living End in paper and Living End has a hell of a time once you have a scavenging use down just because, you know, all of your things cost at least one to cycle and it only costs him one mana to eat whatever you put in there. So you have to kind of pl try to play the fair game and probably lose. Living End still usually has the better side of that matchup, but it is a matchup that's partly reliant on Green Stompy not getting a Scavenging Ooze down. So that's my thoughts on Scavenging Ooze. Noble Hierarch is one that not many people play, but I do. I like it a lot. 
It gives you a little extra power in the early game. It slows you down, you know, like turn one plays down by a turn, but it, it gives you that mana back. And then, you know, a lot of times with two and two, you'll play like experiment one into Strangle Root Geist. Make your experiment one a two two, swing with your Stranger Root Geist for three because of the Exalted. So the Exalted is pretty useful sometimes. And then it also just counts as an extra point of devotion towards Aspect. I don't know, I like having a few mana dorks in the deck. I didn't do it this time because I think for Lanoar Elves and such, it's not nearly as important. But it does make you a little weaker to sleep sweepers, which are already kind of a weak spot in the deck. So I can see going either way. I like it because it makes you slightly better against spot removal decks because you're a little more threat dense. Because, I mean, Noble Hierarch might not seem like much of a threat. But if you strap a Rancor to her, she's swinging as a, uh, what is it? 3-3, three, three, I think? No, uh, 3-2, rather. So, you yeah. know, strap a Rancor to her, play the plus 4, plus 4 buff, and suddenly she's a serious threat that can actually finish out a game if your opponent's spot removing a lot of the other creatures. So that's that. Uh, Horizon Canopy is pretty good. I would run that over Forests. Just gives us a way to late game if we're in a, a, against a control deck or a grindy deck. Get rid of some lands in exchange for some cards. Uh, this is a very low curve deck. We don't need a lot of lands and getting flooded sucks. Uh, and we don't really care about paying the one life to tap for green. That's fine with us. So I think this card is very worth it overall. I would run three to four. In my paper version, I have one copy. Online, I have zero because they're like $50 each and I don't feel like buying them. But I think it's worth it in the deck basically to prevent flood and even if you're not flooding, if you're playing against the deck with a lot of spot removal or sweepers, late game they're just going to be outvaluing you and you need a little bit of a way to keep your main account down and draw into more threats and that's what this is used for. I think I already mentioned it on the previous slide, Dismember is a pretty good upgrade over Prey Upon. They, I mean it has some drawbacks too, it costs you 4 life to cast, we don't run any black man in the deck so you can't really get around that. Makes it a little bit bad in the burn matchup, but Prey Upon is sorcery speed and you need a big creature out that's not even going to trade with your opponent and just makes it a super awkward card to use even if it is pretty good in the deck because you know a leatherback bailoff is gonna kill pretty much anything and not even trade but I, I like this member better and then finally I, I like to run some collected companies in the sideboard I think I currently run two I can see going up to three just helps against control decks uh, I think it's better than the protection from blue can't be counted creatures even Especially turn four when they sweep you. If end of turn, turn four, you can play this, put out two threats. A lot of times you can just swing in for the win on your turn five or your turn, yeah, on your turn five. I want it to be pretty good. And also, you can cast it at their end of turn if you know they're holding up a counter but only have enough mana for one. They'll counter the collected company. You can get out the threats or pumps you need to win the game. And then again, you're golden. So makes things super awkward for control players since they're trying to hold up mana in certain ways. And I find it to be very good in those matchups. It's won me a new number of games that. The Friday Night Magic I took, uh, I took Green Stompy to when I went 3-2. I beat a control deck and I beat it basically with Collected Company. In the second game they tried to play around it and it didn't matter because I had other ways to win. But I think, uh, I think Vines of the Vastwood on one of my guys, uh, won it for me. Like, I think they kind of, they kind of refused to play their Sweeper because they knew I was holding up Collected Company mana. And so they instead wanted to have all their spot removal up. But that, that ended up not working out for them either because I had Vines to save, uh, guy single target style anyway so that's the deck for the week i really enjoyed playing it i hope you guys enjoyed watching it i like this deck a lot it's one of my favorite budget decks like i said it's the first one i ever built in paper or online for that matter and so it has a special place in my heart um I, as budget modern decks go i think it is surprisingly competitive i think it's one of the most competitive modern decks that that's budget buildable and I think it's along the lines of, you know, kind of the $50 red deck win style decks in terms of its win percentage. I think it's in that same kind of range in terms of how good it is. Um, so yeah, I like it a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed the videos and I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, Bobgar here. I just really wanted to quickly say, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you enjoy my content in general and would like to see more of it, subscribe. I'll be coming out with more content in the future. And please leave me comments and let me know what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, both in terms of production and in terms of my play and my deck building and all that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will see you guys next time.